So uh, Tony Nese has been released from WWE, as has Arya Daivari. Uh, both of them largely were working on 205 Live. Every now and then we would see them on one of the main shows, but they are gone. And also gone. I'm going to start at the beginning right here in case you didn't listen to the show yesterday. New WWE writer Kenise Mobley, Mobley appeared on the Asian Not Asian podcast recently and stated that she was not required to know anything about wrestling before being hired as a writer for WWE. Uh, Mobley is a stand-up comedian, film producer from Brooklyn, appeared on the podcast earlier this month. Yes, she said, I have just been hired by WWE. Given the things that you know about me and my entire life and what I'm into, yes, it is surprising. Yes, also a surprise for me, they did not require me to know anything about wrestling. But I do have a background in film production and comedy writing. And they were like, perfect, come on in. Post-wrestling also had more that I did not read yesterday, so here it is. I am on the Monday Night Raw team. So there's Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, and the people I know that are on it are Bobby. His name is either Bobby Ashley or Bobby Lashley, and I really should know that. He's like this giant black guy, and he and the people who are part of his crew... I know that they call, or at least as of last year they called themselves, the Hurt Business. The Hurt Business. They wear suits, and they're like, we're cool. (laughs) So if you ever wanted to explain to somebody what the Hurt Business was, they wear suits, and they're like, we're cool. Okay? Well, today, Sean Ross Sapp tweeted, WWE writer... Kenise Mobley has been let go. She was in the news this week after a podcast appearance where she said she was not familiar with the product. We had more in the Wrestling Observer last night. Regarding the interview, Dave wrote, This got a lot of criticism outside of WWE about hiring someone as a writer who knows nothing about wrestling. I mean, Dave writes, there is good and bad in it, but more bad. Dave likes to look at both sides of the story. The reality is, it's the people in charge who choose the directions and angles. The writers are just there to fill in words and for ideas. Sometimes people out of the box will come up with viable ideas, although most of the time not understanding the uniqueness of what wrestling is as an entertainment form and not spending a lot of time around wrestling fans and learning from them is a huge hindrance. Because there will be so many ideas that if you don't know wrestling, the people will come up with that you don't work. We've also seen people who are out of the box come up with ideas that do work, and most importantly, those around too long limit their perspectives with what has the potential to work. This turned into a fairly big thing, heavily talked about on social media, but also noted among those on the inside. Mobley was under the gun for speaking publicly on subjects that WWE doesn't want stuff talked about. One person very close to the situation noted the negative reaction to this and said that she is not the only one in this situation. And actually, this is typical for many of the writers. But where they were embarrassed by this is that by going public, it makes WWE to the outside world look, and I quote, blindingly stupid. Listen, as I talked about yesterday... Mobley here is far from the first person that has been hired by World Wrestling Entertainment to write storylines for a wrestling show with the requirement being that you don't know you you don't need to know anything about wrestling. Now, as Dave noted, it is true. These writers, I mean, everything has to go through Vince, everything has to go through Bruce Pritchard and everything like that. And quite frankly, whether you're writing about wrestling or whether you're writing a Star Wars film or whatever the case might be, at the end of the day, a story is a story. There is supposed to be a protagonist, there's usually an antagonist, and usually there is a beginning, there is a middle, and there is an end. There's usually a conflict. There's usually a resolution. And if you know anything about anything, if you're even remotely competent as a writer, you should be able to help 
with uh, writing a story. The people that know wrestling can do the wrestling part. And you can say, for example, well, hold on a second. There's a beginning, but what's the middle? What's the conflict? What's the revolu- res- What's the resolution and what's the end? You should be able to do that not knowing anything about wrestling. So I, I realized that as I read the quotes from Kenise Mobley here, it sounded like I was making fun of Mobley for not knowing anything about anything. But at the end of the day, I got nothing against Kenise Mobley. They said, you don't need to know anything about wrestling to do this job. So why should I be mad at them? I'm not mad at them at all. I'm glad that they got hired. I'm glad they made money for a little while. What I do find incredible, but I don't because I've been following WWE for a long time. What I find incredible is you are willing to hire people that know nothing about wrestling to write a wrestling show. Yet, if they go public and they state that I was hired to write a wrestling show, but I don't know anything about wrestling, you feel embarrassed about it. You feel like you look stupid. What did she say that wasn't true? Nothing. So if you feel stupid about it, then the issue is that you are doing something that you realize, in fact, the outside world looks stupid. Well, maybe one of the requirements to writing a wrestling show should, in fact, be that you know something about wrestling. Maybe the requirement should be that if you've got a world champion, a WWE champion, maybe at the very least people should know that person's name in order to be hired for this job. If you're embarrassed that it gets out, that you're hiring people to write about wrestling that don't understand wrestling, then, bro, that's on you. That's on who you hire. So anyway, that's the story. Blindingly stupid is a term that I think I'm going to be using for the rest of my life. It makes them feel to the outside world that they're blindingly stupid. Well, maybe it is blindingly stupid to hire people to write about wrestling that don't know about wrestling. I talked about it yesterday. If you're Vince... And there's going to be like a, a uh, you know, the, the show Friends. Everyone know that, that show, Friends? Didn't they just do like a Friends reboot, Mike? Is that true? I have no idea. You don't have any idea? Well, they did. They did a Friends reboot, okay? Guess who never watched one episode of Friends? You're looking at him right now. Can you imagine if they hired me? A Friends reunion, okay? Not a reboot. I apologize. It was a Friends reunion. Can you imagine if they hired me to write the Friends reunion? A guy that never had watched Friends, not one episode his entire life? Can you imagine what somebody at the higher end of WWE would say about that decision? Meanwhile, they've done that countless times. Not just with Kenise Mobley here. So that's the story. I believe that more people are probably going to be on the chopping block. Probably writers, maybe some wrestlers. It sucks. They'll probably all be told the same thing. It's budget cuts, budgetary reasons. Mm. Even though they could... They could probably hire... I'm not going to say it. But anyway, that's the story. Oh, Fandango is gone! Yeah, as I say, we can add some Uh. new names to that list. We won't get to see Everize choked out at the same time, at least not in WWE. Looks like they've been released, but put that camera... They released Everize? Yeah, put that camera back on Brian real quick, because I want to tell him about this tweet from Sean Rassap here. For what it's worth, I'm told fan reaction to Kenise Mobley's podcast appearance had little to nothing to do with the decision to let to, for WWE to let her go. I was told it was more of an internal concern. What she was told, I'm not sure. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.